Working with glass and translucent materials inside of Substance Painter has always been a huge pain in the butt, but that's gonna end today for you. All right, let's get into it. All right, so Substance has released a brand new version. It's 9.1.1. And in this version, we now have some translucency support. And you can see it right here inside of the default French restaurant table scene. To get to this, all you need to do is go to File, Open Sample, and click French Restaurant Table. This comes loaded, preloaded with your download of Substance Painter. You can see the scene here, it looks great, right? Like, check it out. We got some glass, we got wine bottles, we got champagne bottles, all right? We've got um, the ability to see through them and understand what we're looking at here. And if you take a look at these glass shaders, they're pretty straightforward, right? There's not too much going on. We can go down here into this base and you will see that there are two controls that are really affecting this. There's translucency and absorption color. So translucency is how much you're able to see through it. And if I just scroll that all the way down to zero, you can see this update and now I'm not seeing through it at all. You can scroll it up to one, totally transparent. The absorption color is essentially the color of the glass. So if you want it to be red, blue, whatever, and now this isn't like a perfect one-to-one -one what glass is going to look like. There are other factors that weigh in like the IOR and things like that that will take place in the render, but this is not a fully ray traced output. But what this does give us is a quick visual of what it's going to look like, which again is a huge massive improvement of where we were. So if I wanted to take this base glass material, let's say I wanted to make this uh, champagne bucket I wanted to make that glass too. So what I'm going to do is go over here and just click on it. And you think like, all I need to do is just copy and paste that in, right? So I can just copy and paste it. Oh, wait, that's that glass. That's back to where we used to be, where it's translucency, but I'm not being able to visualize it and all that stuff. So why did that happen? Let's dig a little bit deeper. And to do that, I go to my favorite thing to use when I'm debugging something or just trying to wrap my head around why a material isn't working. And that is another sample file called the meat back character. So for the meat back character, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. It's laid out well. And I know that everything else is about it is working. And it just allows me as a really good test bed to make sure there's nothing wrong with the model that it's that, that what I'm dealing with is exclusively with the material I'm trying to create. So again, I know that it's translucency and absorption color. So if I create a new fill layer here and I go into my properties panel, I scroll down, I don't see translucency and absorption color, right? Those are not one of the default parameters that come when you create a new layer or new material or whatever. To get that, you need to go into your texture set settings panel, this tab here, and scroll down to where it says channels. There's a little plus icon and all you have to do is click this and say absorption color and translucency. And now I will have those in my list here. I just need to activate them using these little boxes. There we go. But again, there's still a problem. If I slide this up, there's no difference visually to the head of this meat Mac character. The last step in order to do this is this uh, button right here. So if I hover over, you'll see this is our shader settings panel. And the one thing that you have to do is you wanna make sure to scroll down here to the interior settings and you're going to want to enable translucency. It's going to be grayed out at first. That's because subsurface scattering is turned on by default. You just want to unenable, disenable, disable, disable that one, and then enable translucency. And there we go. That's all we need to do. Now we can go in here and we can update, we can change, we can you know set our different absorption color. Uh, we can change around the translucency and do whatever we need to do. Oh, I forgot one more thing. You need to enable absorption well for that absorption color to change. There we go. Now we've got the absorption color that can change. Now you can either create your own glass shader or you can go into the asset library here and you can search for glass and leverage any one of the hundreds or tens, I don't know how many dozens of glass materials they are in your work as well. So if you wanted this tinted glass, I can just say send to you, send to Substance Painter. It'll appear over here in my uh, little side panel and I can drag and drop that on there. I'll go ahead and turn off the other one that I created. Now, this is key too. So just always make sure that the translucency and absorption boxes are checked on here. And now you, you'll be able to see, and again, get a rough visualization of that glass shader. 
So that's pretty much it. Feel free to play around with that a little bit. Give feedback in the chat window below or in the comments down below if you have questions about that. And I'll be happy to look into it for you all. But hopefully this solves a pain point as I know this is something that was painful for me over the years. And hopefully this helps you out going forward. All right, take care, everybody.